1984, the movie Ghostbusters released, and audiences saw one of the greatest films of all time. Many years later, it was immortalised in Lego for the first time with the Ecto-1 and the Firehouse. But now in years past, we've been subjected to UCS sets and sets like the Daily Bugle, so it was time for the Ghostbusters to get that treatment. Happy Halloween everyone, welcome to the Geekdom, the place where we outcast come to talk about the things we love, and today we're talking about Ghostbusters. Now as you can probably tell, I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan, it is one of my favourite things of all time, and I have got my favourite video I have ever made ready for you guys today. So sit back, don't cross the streams, and do enjoy, because I love this set. Here we have the UCS Ghostbusters Firehouse HQ. This is the biggest build I've ever tackled. It has over 7,400 pieces. This thing is massive. As you can see, we've got the main firehouse, Razor Cult Bookstore, the Ecto 1A from Ghostbusters 2, and four brand new minifigures for you guys to enjoy. So let's jump right in with Razor Cult Books. Now, in Ghostbusters 2, we saw that after the Ghostbusters shut down, Ray opened his own bookstore, and he is here, immortalized in Lego. Now, this build is pretty much just a white box, but that box is built up of all of those, like, really nice bricks, like the, the kind of brick-textured Lego pieces. I don't know how to describe that any better, but they're in white, and they line the entire build. The top is just flat black plates, and it has that massive, beautiful Razor Cult book sign on the front just screams Ghostbusters 2. I love it so much. Um, the, the, the window in the front also says occult books uh, with some kind of wavy lines around it. I don't know. I thought it was a weird design, but Ray seems to like it, so why not? Inside, you've got a desk for Ray and just bookshelves lining the whole place. I love this little side build. Uh, it's, it's not the main attraction, but I, I do really enjoy this build. Provided some really, really cool like insights into what the Ghostbusters lives really are. Just outside of Ray's occult books, we have the dig site. Now, this build is on a 48 by 48 base plate, which is, oh, I mean, my Titan's tower was on 32 by 32. This thing is a monstrosity, and I had to fill the streets somehow. And I thought, hey, Ghostbusters 2, let's stick with the theme. When they're drilling outside of Dana's apartment, and they drill into the floor to find the pink slime. So I built that segment here. I've got those kind of like um, hazard banners going around the side of it. I've got the big yellow crane equipment that we see them use in that scene of the film. Um, the ground is all smashed to bits. It's got those really nice one by two slope pieces just to create this effect of like a smashed floor. We've got the pink slime oozing out, you know, creating ghosts for Vigo. Looks awesome. And then dotted all around, connected via um, one by one clip pieces, are just tools. We've got a um, we've got a pickaxe and we've got a pneumatic drill. Uh, also, we've got a toolbox just to kind of make it feel like a work environment. I feel like I feel like it makes it look a lot more realistic on the sets. The crane equipment was built very differently to what I would usually have used to give it that cool angular look. I used the pieces that we originally saw in the Marvel CMF um, to create that sort of hinge because they come in yellow and I thought that's a perfect opportunity to use those. I also used those blade pieces in yellow to create uh, like a four pronged crane um, that connects in the middle to, to, to lower Ray into the, into the hole into the ground. Yeah, it was a really cool way to figure out how to build that, and I love all the little details in this set, including down an alleyway between the two buildings, there's pink slime seeping out of the floor. I really went for the Ghostbusters 2 vibe on this one because the original Firehouse set was based on the first film, and I wanted Ghostbusters 2 to get a little bit of love. I know it's vastly hated, but I'm a big fan of that film, so I was giving it some love, and I love the pink slime. I think it's a great way to pay homage to that really great film. Now, I'm gonna leave the firehouse to last, so you better stick around for that one. Um, so we're gonna show you the Ecto-1A next. Now, this is such a cool build. Um, the crux of it, like the skeleton of it, is the original Ecto-1 set here, because I have no idea how someone could make a more perfect set than that. Like, I love that set so, so much, and I figured, why would I try and do it myself if LEGO's already made a really awesome version of it? Obviously, I've changed the roof, I've added so many textures and stuff, um, but the main sort of portion of it is the original Ecto-1. Now, inside, I've stripped it a little bit, I've made more room for proton packs, as well as more room for seats, as well as an actual seat in the front um, for Ray or, or Winston to sit in. Um, so the inside is slightly different. I have remodeled it slightly just to fit more in, because I feel like that was the one flaw with the original. 
but you couldn't really do much with it. Um, on the roof is where all the stuff changed. I have tried to make it as accurate as possible to the Ecto-1A in the second film. I couldn't get any great um, images of it, but thankfully Playmobil, which this is the only time you will ever see me compliment Playmobil, Playmobil put out an amazing Ecto-1A model. Um, so that was a really great point of reference, but yeah, that's the last time I will ever compliment Playmobil. So the top has all of those like neon signs. Uh, in the film, it has a whole bunch of stuff. It says Ghostbusters, it says We're Back, which I've got on here, For Hire, which I've got on here. It had a bunch of different signs, but I've gone for these two because I feel like they're the ones that stick in my mind the most from that film. Um, I've also got that really cool satellite dish on the top there, which was a slightly odd build. I used the magic wand from Wizarding World of Harry Potter uh, in black to create like the actual like antennae for the satellite, and I think that looks really cool. I think it works really well with the scale I was using. I think that looks really cool. It's got all of these awesome multicolored lights all over the top. I just think the top of this car looks way more vibrant than the original. Um, the back of the car is slightly different as well. It has those um, hinged plates on them in red to create that sort of like lip that the Ecto 1A had, as well as the new license plates, which we saw in Ghostbusters 2 when they were like, you know, thinking, oh, we need to go and make the Statue of Liberty crush this building or whatever it was. Um, so we've got those there. Those license plates look really, really good. They're on the front and the back. Um, and the sides is where the most notable changes are. You've got all the different uh, phone numbers. It says, call me at the front. Um, it's got those really nice, like, yellow and black hazard stripes, which I think look really, really cool, really make the vehicle pop. And they've got the Ghostbusters 2 logo on the side there as well, which I love. I love that logo so much. I think that's, that's really, really cool. Um, also on the roof of the car, you can see slightly underneath the um, like the for hire sign and stuff. Uh, it's like the same sort of hazard symbols, but in orange and black instead of yellow and black. Absolutely love this car. I really wish I could have it in real life. One day I might try and see if I can get some stickers made and actually make this car because this is probably my favorite bit of the set. I love it so much. Okay, moving on to the minifigures for this set, which is always my favorite part. We've got four figures here. We've got the four main Ghostbusters in their black suits from Ghostbusters 2. And you're probably thinking, Freddy, they look blue. It's because they are. Um, <laughs> basically, the suits in the film have like a bluish tinge to them. And I've tried to match the color as best as I possibly can. And I think they've come out great. They've got actual name tags this time. I'm looking at you, Lego, putting their initials, which is just... Well, I mean, I, I know you, you can't really probably print that fine, but come on. It says stamps. Not RS. Disgraceful. Do better. They all have accurate colours for the uh, for the straps of their proton packs as well, as well as their belt colours are still the same because that's the one thing Lego did right on those figures. Um, but yeah, their their proton packs are in this like really nice dark green colour because that's what they are in the films, not that sort of tan colour. Um, and they look really great. The torso looks awesome. I'm really proud of that. The legs actually have printing this time. Not a great deal, just some wrinkles and some black boots, as well as that sort of hose that connects to their legs and like all the way around to the back of the belt. The arms have very similar printing to what we saw in the firehouse originally, uh, except they're in the blue, obviously. They've got more extended um, elbow pads, just for more detail, and they've also sporting the Ghostbusters 2 logo. Um, just really popping with color, these figures. I love them, I think they're really, really cool. Um, once again, they all have proper name badges that are full names not just initials um, and they all have slightly different face prints now you're probably looking at them and going they're not different at all I've just removed some wrinkles and Egon's glasses I've changed to just completely clear Winston no longer has a mustache because he doesn't in Ghostbusters 2 as well as Winston getting some better hair as well I tried to match this as close as possible to Ghostbusters 2 I also gave Egon and Ray different hair as well not too sure about Egon. I think it does match very well, but there's just something so funny about that really exaggerated Elvis hair that they were using in the original Ghostbusters sets. Um, I gave Ray a different hair as well because it's just more accurate and I prefer that. Um, Venkman probably has the least changes. He, I just removed some wrinkles. I kept the same hair though because that hair is spot on. It was made for Peter Venkman. One of my favorite things about these minifigures is they all have brand new proton packs. Now, Proton pack is like the most iconic thing about the Ghostbusters and I had to do them properly. I like what Lego did with the original ones. I thought they were a, a, a good enough build, but I wanted to take it a step further. Um, they're a bit more complex to build now. They're built on a two x four 
um, black plate and just built up with some bricks. I used the, that really cool piece, the, the flat circular two by two with the hole in the middle. And then I used a one by, a one by two jumper um, reversed onto it to make that sort of like extended belt section to it, which I think looks really, really cool. I gave them uh, two printed one by one tiles, one with a warning label on it and the other with just like Rebels or whatever the textures are on the back there, which I think looks cool. Um, it's got an, like an extended portion, which is a one by one snot brick, um, just with a plate on the edge of it. I wanted to use another Harry Potter one, but the size was too big to match. So I just went with a tan one by one plate for that. It's my only gripe, but I'm not too bothered by it. There's also printing on the two by two circular piece um, for the cyclotron. Um, just to just to beef it up a bit add some more color make it look a lot more accurate love these proton packs The neutrino wand is also slightly different uh, It uses a lightsaber hilt and a magic wand because I think that looks really cool And I love the wand piece. I know I've used it so many times, but I love it I think it looks really cool and I think it makes a really nice looking neutrino wand the Ghostbusters also come with some different accessories uh, Egon and Winston come with walkie-talkies just like um, walkie talkies we saw in the original ecto-1 set and one of my favorite things is the ghost traps which i gave to ray and venkman now i've obviously got my ghost trap here um, i tried to make this one as accurate as possible because i absolutely hate the original ghost traps they used in the sets um, they're a bit beefier i used snot bricks and stuff as well as some plates with custom printing just to make it more colorful and more accurate i like that i used the exposed snot bricks on the bottom to create it look like it has wheels um, they're also using the kind of magnifying glass piece and a just a, a regular clip piece to create the handle which I think looks really really cool um, love these ghost traps love these figures so cool I've also made them on a display stand which is very similar to the one we see in the original Ecto 1 except colors are slightly changed around and it's got the Ghostbusters 2 logo on there instead that also comes spare slime blowers for the Ghostbusters. We have two of them. Um, this is a really, really cool build. Just a really great use of a bunch of different pieces, like clip pieces and and circular one by ones. I love this. I think it looks really cool and really captures the slime blower well. Um, there's two of those in the set. I give them to Ray and Winston because they're the ones that actually use them in the film. So yeah, they look really cool. Okay, people. The moment you've all been waiting for, the Ghostbusters Firehouse Headquarters. We're gonna start from the top and work our way down. The roof is, it's its a roof. Um, you'll notice the entire build is built out of those like red brick pattern pieces, which I love. One of my favorite pieces that Lego have ever produced. I think it's so, so perfect for the firehouse. I had to use them. Um, and they're obviously outlining the entire roof section here. Um, but I've also uh, created that little lip around it using snot bricks and then just 1x4s all the way around and then 1x4 plates. Um, to create those curved bits I used 1x1 tiles stacked on top of each other with a sloping cheese slope um, in, like a, in like a light grey and that looks really good. It creates that sort of curvature that the building has um, because I needed to find a way to do it to allow us to take the walls off. Now we're looking at the third floor here, the top floor. Um, this is probably the most barren of all the floors. Um, I had some blueprints of what the layout of the Ghostbusters firehouse was. So I've tried to match it as perfectly as possible. On the left here, we've got like a, a kitchen area. We've got some drawers, we've got a hob. Um, I tried to create like what, like a washing machine or a dishwasher or something using those um, cupboard pieces, which I think looks really cool. I'm a big fan of this. It's a very empty space, but we never really see it in Ghostbusters. So I worked with what I had. Um, obviously you can see here that there's a fire pole going all the way down the build. Obviously we could expect that it's the Ghostbusters headquarters. The, the pole is one of the most iconic things. Um, there's just some little tables and drawers everywhere because it's like a laboratory. Um, we've got little um, trans pink blocks there to represent like slime in the canisters and stuff. Um, I love building a microscope so I built a microscope there because I love them. Um, we've also got a black shelf there, just just tiles and one by ones, just making a making a shelf. There's nothing on the shelf, but there's a shelf. The main attraction of this floor is the dark room that we saw in Ghostbusters 2 when they're doing the pictures of Vigo and everything sets on fire. Um, so we've got the spectronalizer in the back there, which they obviously talk about when they're discussing what food they're gonna get before the thing sets on fire. And there's a desk there as well for them to like 
process the images and stuff. I don't know how film works, never used a film camera. So whatever that's called when they put it in the water or whatever. Yeah, that's what this room is. Taking a trip down the fire pole, we're onto our next room here. Um, and this this one this one was really fun. I really enjoyed this. So on the far left where the kitchen was upstairs is the bedroom. Now there's four beds in here. Um, I watched the scene of Ray having a strange dream multiple times to try and get the layout of this room proper. Um, as you can see, we've got a couple lamps there. We've got the beds there with those yeah, yellow sheets. Um, the beds are pretty much the same build as the bed used in the Sanctum Sanctorum Showdown for Peter Parker's apartment. Um, cause I really like that build for the bed. So I've just repeated that there three times. Um, yeah, there's also some slime leaking off a table there. Just some green slime to make a change. Um, it's an iconic location. What can I say? The Ghostbusters gotta have a place to sleep. Going out into the hall next to them. Once again, you can see that pole continuing on its way down, but we've also got the table and chairs where they're eating Chinese food when they get their first ever call to go out and get Slimer, um, in the hotel. So. Yeah, we've just got some tables there and a box of Chinese food, as well as like a fork on the table held in with a one by one clip piece. Um, that table is the same piece used for the bat phone all the way back when we got that original bat cave set, however many years ago. Um, next to them is an arcade machine. I don't know why, but they have an arcade machine, so I built an arcade machine. I really like this build though. The, the joystick is made out of a microphone, and, and yeah, I think that's a really cool idea for a joystick. I saw it online somewhere and I was like, I've got to incorporate this into a build one day. And alas, I got to, which is really, really cool. Love this little arcade cabinet. So cool. The next room over, um, you've got some boxes in the back just to try and make it look a bit more crowded. Um, you've got a massive pool table uh, with a snooker cue on it and the balls and stuff. And then also a toaster. Now my Ghostbusters 2 fans out there will know why this toaster is important because it dances. <laughs> They put pink slime in a toaster and they make it dance. So they make it dance on a pool, on a pool table to, so, to some Jackie Wilson, which, you know what, I respect. I love that song. That's a, that's, a, that's a fantastic tune. Next to them is also like a massive tape recording setup, just a bunch of machines and stuff. You've got a little TV screen on the left because this is the area where they interview Dana when they first meet her, when she tells them all about Zool and stuff, when they're talking about Tobin's spirit guide. So I've got some chairs set up, a camera, just a small little camera build. I quite like that build though, it's really cool. It's just built out of a like a one by one snot brick and some, some plates and stuff. It's a very simple build, but it makes a really nice effect. The windows are built using those one by two bricks, the, like the window panes and stuff. I love those pieces for windows and they were just absolutely the perfect choice for this set. Love them. There's windows all over this place, so you gotta incorporate them. I also, on the ledge for the second floor windows, used those kind of ornate fence pieces in black to try and just make it look a bit more ornate. That's what they have on the hook and ladder firehouse, so I did my very best to replicate that. All of these floors are attached using um, one by four jumper plates, um, just, just because that's what they use in the bugle and stuff. It keeps it very easy to remove floors and stuff, as well as the walls being built very similar to the way the bugle does it and the way my Titans Tower did it. You can just pull them off very easily um, just so you can kind of get ease of access inside. The bottom floor is such a cool floor. This was the first one I built. I worked my way up um, and it has some of the most iconic parts of the Ghostbusters firehouse. It has um, a bay for the Ecto-1A to sit uh, as well as some like just mechanics tools and stuff and the mechanics toolbox and stuff because we see Ray use one when he's building the Ecto-1 in the first movie. Um, the doors were unnecessarily challenging um, as you can see from behind they're just kind of like rectangles but using some arch pieces around the front it looks like um, lo looks like the doors are arched as well um, the doors in the movie are very strange because they open as two big doors but then they also have two doors within them so that people can get in and out. It's a very complicated setup, but I managed to make it happen with some door pieces and then just a bunch of bricks. They look great, they open inwards, so it's probably very difficult to open it with the car inside, but you know, that's the way it's gotta be. Um, next to where the car sits are the lockers. Now I only did three lockers because in the first movie they only see three lockers and stuff, and to be honest, there was not enough room for Winston. Winston is my least favorite Ghostbuster, so he did not make the cut. Sorry, my boy, but Ray, Egon, and Pete, 
they stomp you any day. Now the lockers themselves, the doors are custom printed. They've got their names on the front as well as like some kind of window texture as well as just like some detailed wood. Don't know how else to put that. Um, but on the inside, they use um, those one by one circular plates with like a, a pin in the top that connects to the roof so that you can attach um, the torsos of the Ghostbusters minifigures we got from the original firehouse onto the roof. Uh, I just wanted to pay a little homage to the original set that I never was able to get my hands on that inspired this absolute monstrosity of a set. Um, so that's my little reference to them there. Their, their torsos are inside the um, are inside the lockers. It's the actors' clothes that they could put on anytime they wanted. We've got Janine Melnitz's desk. I love Janine Melnitz. I think she's a very very funny character. Um, she's the desk is just chock full of stuff. We've got a computer, like one of the big old timey computers. We've got a plant, just a generic plant. We've got a button for her to yell. We got. Behind the desk is Peter Venkman's office. Uh, it's a very simple build. I used some fences to create that sort of like cordoned off area. He's got a desk as well. The entire floor is just tiled. I love plates. I love flat tiles. Um, I just think they make sets look so much more seamless. I don't like exposed studs. So I've done my best with this whole set to just have it tiled off as best as possible. And that is no different in Pete Venkman's office. Um, he's got like a with like a shelf on his back wall as well. He's got a chair and stuff like that. But the real attraction is round the corner because we have the Ecto Containment System. The light is green, the trap is clean. One of my favorite quotes from Ghostbusters. I have built the Ecto Containment System there. It's got a lovely printed two by three tile with the, uh, with the containment system on it. Next to it is just another generic piece of that containment system. And next to that, we've got some crates, some empty crates, uh, a table, for them to explain how big a Twinkie will get. Um, and they've also just got some like really nice purple piping all along the wall, just to make it look a bit more sciency, I guess. The facade of the entire building is quite something. The bottom floor specifically, because I used one by two jump, like both sided snot bricks to create like tiles. I tried to differ the bottom floor from the other floors. Um, so I've can, on both sides I've put different coloured one by two flat tiles to create like a bricked texture without using the actual brick piece. It was a silly mistake by me because it made it so much more time consuming. Um, but it's come out with a really great effect because on the outside you've got those like grey brick patterns, but on the inside it's got that really nice green look to it because um, the inside is tiled with green and stuff like in the movies and stuff. So. I've done my very best to capture everything I could from the movies. Um, I mean, hell, outside there's two yellow bollards that just don't need to be there, but they are. Um, you've also got the iconic Ghostbusters sign. Now, this one is the Ghostbusters 2, the one you're seeing on the screen. Um, it uses a 6x6 um, flat tile printed with the Ghostbusters 2 logo on it. But on the reverse, it uses four 2x2 two two inverse studs plates to create the Ghostbusters logo. And if you're not a fan of Ghostbusters 2 and you're thinking, ah, oh, shucks, I don't like that logo, you're in luck because I did the other one as well. You've got Ghostbusters 1 as well in case you wanted to make your firehouse the Ghostbusters 1 variant instead. Um, there's a chimney running all the way up the side of the building. Um, it's just there. There's nothing special about the chimney. It's just red brick. Um, and you've also got those one by one circular flat star, st star spangled studs on the side. Good God, say that 10 times fast. Well, everyone, that's about it. I do hope you have enjoyed. If you have, please tell me in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell me what your favorite Ghostbusters moment is and tell me what you'd like me to do in future. I always like hearing what you have to say. But everyone, that's it from me. I hope you have a great Halloween. And remember, don't cross the streams.